The Jack Miller Center for Teaching America's Founding Principles and History presents Dr. Alan Gelzo, one of the nation's leading scholars on Abraham Lincoln. Dr. Gelzo discusses Lincoln, the Orator with Dr. Michael Andrews. Lincoln's greatest political speeches are often considered to be masterpieces of political prose. They are also considered by many, particularly the Gettysburg Address, to be foundational documents for American political life. Why do his greatest speeches still resonate so powerfully? And is the Gettysburg Address a foundational document with, say, the same status as the Declaration of Independence? Well, I would say no. Not because I'm suggesting any detraction from Lincoln's powers as a speaker, which were formidable. He was a tremendous stylist, not because he looked good, because plainly, obviously, he was not what we would call telegenic, um, and also not because he had a great, compelling speaking voice. He did not have some uh, rolling baritone voice and perfect enunciation. Um, he's not someone the central casting would have gone to right away for a role in a movie. Uh, he actually had a rather high-pitched voice, very penetrating, very powerful, but still, you did not look at Lincoln and expect to hear what you heard. What made Lincoln persuasive was his appeal to logic. Here was, here was the lawyer, the man who'd been a trial lawyer, who had, who had cut his milk teeth uh, as a speaker, persuading juries. Lincoln's long suit is persuasion. So what he articulates in his speeches is not so much new foundations or extending foundations. He is, his speeches are documents of continuance. If we regard the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution as our founding instruments, if we regard, for instance, the Federalist Papers as part of that founding deposit on which the ideas of the Republic are built, Lincoln is less an innovator, and what he is is more of a continuer. He builds upon that, and he was very conscious of that himself, because he spoke of how the Declaration of Independence was central to his own thinking. He said in Philadelphia shortly before his inauguration that he had never had an idea politically that didn't spring from the Declaration of Independence. When he spoke of the Constitution, he said, this is the sacred charter of liberty. Do to me, he said, anything you like, do to my party anything you like, but do not detract from that foundational document, the Constitution. So what he regarded himself as doing was not laying some kind of alternative foundation or new foundation for the Republic, but, inter but interpreting and extending, continuing, documents of continuance. That's really what the Gettysburg Address and the, uh, the, the, the great speeches of Lincoln uh, are. The Gettysburg Address in particular is a great statement about continuance. He begins not by saying, let's lay a new foundation. He begins by saying, let's retrieve, let's understand the original one from four score and seven years ago. And let's understand that it's not a matter of us dedicating a cemetery, but rather us dedicating ourselves to the principles of the Republic so that we can have not a totally new beginning. It's very interesting the way he chooses his words at Gettysburg. He doesn't say, let's have a total departure from the past. Let's see that the past was the past, and now we have to speak to the present or to the future. He says, let's have a new birth of freedom. In that phrase, new birth, he's talking about not disconnection, but rather reclaiming, finding a renewed life in the original documents and principles of the founding. So what he's talking about in his speeches is continuance, not an alternative, not some radical departure. This has been a Jack Miller Center digital media presentation. For more information, visit thejackmillercenter.org.